Y además, en este séptimo vicio, the one and only. I think it's worth your while to watch him interview me and somehow pull things that I didn't even know that I could say out of my mouth. He's a magician. Invoke the words of Frank Zappa, say that you know, talk about music is like dancing to architecture, something. Absolutely, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm trying to organize my creative impulses, and I think that my creative impulses come from trying to make up for, like maybe I react to negative things in a way. I'm trying to make up for what I feel like is being lost. Like you can feel something when it's slipping through your fingers. And you know, I want to reach after it. And I think the thing, the thing that I feel is slipping away, is a certain vitality that music, I think, inherently has, but it's under attack from so many different things. So part of the reason there's all these prongs or things to my counter attack. One would be, you know, like surf rock or death metal. All these different things. It's not because I'm trying to be illogical or eclectic, throwing a bunch of stuff together and seeing what happens, like that's not what it is. Each one of them is like a defensive position saying, no, 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 you know, and then trying to be on solid, some solid ground. So there is like a solid center to it. There's like almost like a, like you say, architectural symmetry to it. And then each of the faces of, of the band that you see is rooted into that symmetry because it's trying to say, no, stop. You know, we're not going to slip any farther from this point. It's like a counter attack. Well, that's, it's just where I've been shocked to watch Chile, you know, come onto the radar, onto the Secret Chiefs radar, and just, you know, these cities like Sydney that have traditionally been where most of our, like the highest concentration of fans, or New York, San Francisco, our hometown, you know, Paris, just so many people, and just Santiago just climbing through all of them to take the top place. Like, what? How did this happen? It's been a huge mystery to us, you know. It's exciting, it's cool, but I have no, I had no idea why it happened, really. Like, I know it has something to do with the popularity of Faith No More here, for sure. But, uh, and there, I think people just listen to music here a lot. I think music is really important to people. That's what I'm starting to pick up on, it's like, it's really important to people. It, I think it was 1985 when they came through our crappy little town, or maybe it was 86. Eureka. Yeah, it was actually Arcata, even smaller town. Uh, we, you know, it was it was really amazing what they were, their rhythm section, the way the rhythm section worked with the keyboards. Like nobody was doing things like that, and it blew it blew our minds a lot. But there was the only people who were watching was myself, Mike, and one other person. That's it. That was the whole audience, you know. And uh, anyway. I guess what I say is, I, I really, that really touched me the way they were, the way they had organized their band and the way, the way it sounded at that time. So, you know. be walking through a minefield and you have to you know dodge all of these weird obstacles if that sounds like it's your cup of tea then we're the band for you because <laughs> we, even we don't know how to explain what the hell we're doing yeah! 